we are asked to determine a function of the form y equals a sine of bx or y is equal to a cosine of bx represented by the graph below. So we need to figure out maybe what the a's are, what the b's are, and whether this is a sine or a cosine function. So let's see what clues there are. So the first thing that I notice is that whatever this function is, when x is equal to zero, it does not equal zero. It is equal to negative two. So based on that, do you think, based on what we know about sine and cosine functions, do you think that this is going to be of the form y is equal to a sine of bx or of the form y is equal to a cosine of bx without even knowing what the a's and b's are? Do you think this is going to be a sine function or a cosine function? Well, let's think about what sine of zero is. If you take sine of zero, we already know that that is equal to zero. What is cosine of zero? Cosine of zero is equal to one. So it would be very hard, and especially in this form, it would be impossible if sine of zero is zero to multiply, sine of, multiply zero by something to get to negative two. So it can't be it can't be a sine function of this form. You might say, well, cosine of zero is one. Cosine of zero is one, but here it's negative two. But at least if you have a one, you can then multiply it by something to get to a negative two. So what we now know is that we are at least of this form, but now we have to figure out what the a's and b's are going to be equal to. We know that this function is y is equal to a cosine, a cosine of bx. So the first, the next question I ask you is what is what is a what is a going to be well let's think about it we already saw if we had just cosine of 0 oh, if we just had cosine of bx when x is equal to 0 cosine of b times 0 would just be cosine of 0 and it would get us to 1 but we're not at 1 we're at negative 2 it looks like it you took a cosine function and at least at, when x is equal to 0 we multiplied it by negative 2 so this should be negative two. So now we have a little bit more filled in of what we actually have. We know that it's y is equal to negative two cosine cosine of cosine of of bx. And this this gels with what we see right over here. The amplitude here, you see that the difference between the maximum value and the minimum value, or the minimum and the maximum, is four. Half of that is two. Or another way you think about it, we're varying two from this center point. And over here, if you look, think about the amplitude, the amplitude is the absolute value of this number right over here. The amplitude is equal to the absolute value of this negative two, which is indeed equal to. So it's consistent so far. Now let's think about what b here is. And maybe we can use our knowledge of period, of, of what the period of a, of a periodic function is, to think about what b might be. Well, let's look over here. What is the period? What is the period of this periodic function? Well, let's draw one period. So if we start, if we use this as our starting point, if we view this as our start, or one cycle, I should say. Let's draw one cycle. If you view that as our starting point, at 2 pi over 3, we have completed that cycle. And then we could start the next cycle. We repeat the pattern over again. Then you start the next cycle. So based on that, what is the period? Well, it's the length that you need to go in x to complete one cycle. So that length right over there, you see, is 2 pi over 3. So the period, the period is 2 pi over 3. And given that, given that the period here is 2 pi over 3, can you figure out what b is going to be? Well, the period of this is going to be equal to is going to be equal to 2 pi over the absolute value over the absolute value of b and you can solve this multiple ways you can multiply both sides by 3 in the absolute value of b and you will be left with the absolute value of b is equal to is equal to 3 which means that b could be equal to positive or negative three. And so you might say, well, Sal, 
what do I use? Does B equal positive three or negative three? And so the next question I'll ask you is for a cosine function. So for a cosine function, do you get different values? Is, do you get different values of if you were to make it this a cosine of 3x or a cosine or a cosine cosine of negative negative 3x do you get different values well if you play with the unit circle a little bit if you play with the unit circle if you play with the unit circle so I'm going to draw a little rough unit circle right over here Remember, cosine is the x-coordinate where we intersect the unit circle. And if we go in the positive angle direction, if we go in that direction, our x-coordinate, it starts at 1 and then it gets a little bit shorter. If we go in the negative direction, it starts at 1 and then it gets a little bit shorter. And so you can experiment this with a good bit, but you'll see that cosine of 3x, and this is only the case for cosine, not for sine, cosine of 3x is equal to cosine of negative 3x. So you can actually pick either positive 3 or negative 3. But for simplicity, in this case right over here, I'll just go with the positive 3. So this could be the graph of, and now we get our drum roll, y is equal to negative 2 times the cosine of, no, I said I wouldn't do the negative, uh, the cosine of positive 3x. And we are done.